Hello, this is Notzer, and today's video is a sort of exploration to see how the Japanese fleet, the Japanese DDs specifically, deal with the aircraft carrier menace. So there are two enemy aircraft carriers, a tier 10 and a tier 8 on the enemy team. This is the build. I do have basic firing training and manual AA. Now, I didn't necessarily take basic firing training for its AA properties. Remember, the Shimakaze, along with all the 127mm high-explosive guns for the Japanese DDs, were buffed. So the reload is actually what I was targeting. So, for all intents and purposes, the only skill that I have chosen to drop in order to better reinforce myself is radio location for manual AA. So we'll see how well this works out. I'm sure many of you can guess how it's going to work out. But note, at the beginning of the game, I kept my AA turned off. Whenever he did his initial scout, he didn't see me. And he didn't have any feedback that I was actually there. So it ended up working out very well for me. We are actually in position, and I haven't yet had to use my smoke. Now, unfortunately, there is a Stalingrad. So he's going to use his radar, and for probably 10 or 20 seconds, I'm going to, yep, I'm going to have to be out of line of sight. So I chose to sail towards the island because it should block most of the enemy who could actually engage me. And yep, sure enough, Conqueror Someone is trying to engage me, and of course, with radar, I'm spotted. So the enemy midway is definitely going to try, and I'm just trying to juke. Do some jukes. Just be a little elusive. I have absolutely no hope that my AA could do anything of note. That's why it's basically turned off. Now, having said all of that, why take manual AA if you really have no hope? Honestly, I don't know why manual AA was taken. Because I guess I had in my 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 dumb brain that, oh, I, if I try hard enough, I could do it. Um... But clearly we know life doesn't work like that, and that's not how it's going to work for the Shimakaze. I don't care how hard I try, I'm never going to have enough AA to actually fight it off. The better strategy, to me, is to use islands, smoke, and with the AA turned off, to manipulate the aircraft carrier's line of sight. This forces him to put a little bit more effort into just simply finding you, or your friends, versus keeping the AA turned on and openly firing with the enemy right next to me. Now, I wanted to try and punish the Shima. He was retreating, obviously, and the high explosive does a great job at that, but eventually it's really not going to work out. You know, the enemy aircraft carrier is probably scrambling a squadron as we speak, and I definitely have to consider that. So I'm going to disengage. I'm going to hold my fire, and then I'm going to consider, okay, I didn't need to use my first smoke charge because the friendly was such a nice DD that he chose to use it. So I actually have a little bit of a window to be active in combat. Now you can't do this without the smoke charge. This is the one thing that the CV rework has really like nailed into my mind. You have to have smoke in order to do anything aggressive because a CV could easily scramble his squadron and punish you. So I'm definitely only doing this because I have my smoke. But I have my AA turned off. I want to force him to actually spot me. Once he spots me, then it's on. And please, can we not run in the island? Please, let's not run in the island. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Oh, the aircraft carrier. Now, he spotted... Basically, myself and the enemy DD mutually at the exact same moment, they both decide to focus on the other friendly DD, which is unfortunate for him. But it is fortunate for the team because he is closer to a couple friendly ships than my position would ever be towards friendly ships. I am so overextended and I'm actually very afraid that this torpedo squadron would accidentally scout me out. He does have to deal with the fact that the island is blocking right behind me. But sure enough, yeah, I'm definitely spotted and there's definitely no reason to keep this turned off. So we turn it on. I'm going to not commit fully into this area. 
I merely want to disengage as quickly as I came into the area. The enemy, DD, is firing on my position, and because he actually pulls a Notzer, I am going to fire on his position as well. And honestly, I should have done that while dodging the torpedo bomber. But I think we're good. Until, of course, the attack squadron comes, which I'm easily spotted. I have my AA turned off to try and avoid it, but because of the way the bloom works, once I'm spotted for 20 seconds, it's going to stay. And because of that, it extends my AA detection out to basically one-to-one -one with my concealment, my surface concealment. But hold our fire long enough, turn the AA off, and now we're unspotted. Just in time to engage the Z-23, I guess. And he does look like he would... Yeah, we, we actually clip him. That's good. Still, enemies harassing the hell. It's just so annoying. Now, one thing that I am trying to get in the habit of doing is sending torpedoes in front of an aircraft carrier because those aircraft can't actually see them. That's one of the implementations of the CV rework, that the aircraft don't actually spot torpedoes. So it's in my best interest to not openly fire, to not extend the bloom, rather send the torpedoes and maintain this 3.5 kilometer requirement for the enemy. Because I'm not firing my guns, I actually have to be spotted the entire time at 3.5 kilometers. So it should always force him, yeah, it should always force him to have to do extra work just to spot me. But in response, I'm doing extra work and oh yes! I did not expect that torpedo to take out the Z-23. It is an obvious torpedo area, but remember I sent torpedoes basically in the face of the CV and clearly he didn't spot it. Otherwise the Z-23 would have never taken that. So work against players' understanding of the game. They feel like this stuff should still be spotted, yet it clearly isn't. And since the enemy is not in B point any longer, and we have knocked out the DD, and I know where all the DDs roughly are. There's one in the east, and there's one in the west. There could be a window for me to capture this. So, headed towards B point, of course, and we're basically going to stop right at the border, use smoke, block the ability for the midway to even scout me, and I'm just going to confirm capture this base. There are a couple enemies, and oh, pushing forward a little aggressive. I want to try and push the smoke so it's not quite as obvious. Now, there's a couple enemy ships. Well, there's more than a couple enemy ships. This is the primary flank of the enemy. And only one enemy ship has been killed. And I just feel the, the mosquitoes hovering over me, wanting at my delicious flesh. And uh, I'm just going to try and stall them out. And what do we have here? What is this Lexington doing? He's so aggressive. This looks like a Notzer position. I've, I have killed myself too many times in my CVs because of my poor positioning. And this is no exception. Of course we're going to fire our guns on cooldown. So I sent one torpedo set forward of the island, behind the island, hoping to do good damage. Someone just totally blapped this guy. 35, 40,000 damage, so this is very easy now. And he may or may not actually take a torpedo that was sent for that gap. And I'm just playing with my throttle. Note, we have B point, and yes, the Lexington is trying to hover in spot. But we're wasting so much of his time. And we're doing so much damage, honestly. Some teammate will be able to finish him on. We're getting some good hits with our torpedoes. Three torpedo hits. Did they cause a flood? I hope they did. Enemy Lexington knocked out. That's really helpful. Part of the reason why I, I don't complain about the, the whole um, Shimakaze or Japanese DD impressions of the CV, because at least this gives me a window, a half a second window where I'm not getting torpedoed with double squadron inside the capture at minute one. At least I'm still alive. So, in my book, this is a better experience than the old CV play for the Japanese. The old Japanese CV uh, experience was pretty much you can't do anything, and if the CV wants to kill you, they will. Now, I feel like there's a little bit more of a possible ability to dodge 
the really high alpha damage shots. So I'm pretty happy we've captured both bases. I'm going to head to the north side, try to help my friendly Yamato. You might notice that I've played with Mitt before. I'm trying to help him by using the two torpedo launcher that have been reloaded, and I want to stall out the battleships as they push forward. Clearly, he has the uh, the enemy Kitakaze has his flank, so he's going to just free farm this. And that was a possible torpedo as well. Send the torpedoes at the smoke. That'll be the best for it. But honestly, I just feel like you're going to get blapped quicker by battleships than you would a Kitakaze. So to me, the bigger threat is the fact that the enemy battleships exist at all at, you know, five or six kilometers. I did verify with the friendly Amato, are you going to stay stationary there? Can I send torpedoes right in front of you? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I am. He dies. He dies, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> unfortunately for that Yamato, I think he widened his stance at, honestly, the worst possible moment because it means my torpedoes should hit at least one or two of them. They're sort of rammed against each other. So, yes, we're going to get one on the Massachusetts, one on Yamato. Both cause a flood. Both are going to force out damage control. Since they forced out damage control, I would love to use my smoke and cause a fire and force it to stick. Now, the Kitakaze is roughly uh, probably 7 to 10 kilometers away from my position right now. He is very close. I have to be careful. I assume that he wants to obviously take me out. So every second that I'm in the smoke is a second that the Kitakaze can use to converge on my position. Of course, the one torpedo that would have caused a flood doesn't cause a flood, but we get a fire on the Massachusetts. And if the Massachusetts dies, the game's over. So that's what I'm playing for. And it does indeed finish. We get the kill, and we win the game as a team. Now, oh, unfortunately, I don't know that Japanese DDs will ever enjoy CVs because their AA is just inadequate. But I was able to at least contribute to my team. And I was able to do it in a way that worked knowing that the CVs were actively trying to hunt me. So I was happy with that performance. In the comments, leave what you think. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.